Hi, my name is Shaoshan Liu. I'm the co-founder and chairman of Perceptin. Perceptin is a company that focusing on robotic and autonomous driving technology. Today, we're going to talk about creating autonomous vehicle systems. And then the tutorial consists of nine modules. Uh, we begin with the algorithm part, including localization, how do we localize a car, uh, perception, how do we understand the environment, decision making, and then how do we uh, send commands to the car uh, to maneuver it. And then we talk about the client systems, including the operating systems and the hardware. Uh, at the end, we talk about the cloud, uh, what is in the autonomous driving cloud. Uh, let's start with module one. So in module one, we do a overview of the technology. Um, but before we go into the detail of technology itself, let's go back in history and understand uh, how we entered the AI era. Um, I'm not sure how many of you visited uh, Mountain View area or uh, San Francisco Bay area. There's a computer history museum uh, in Mountain View, right next to Google campus, that give you a very good overview of the technology uh, development in Silicon Valley. So let's go over it and see if we can find some uh, inspiration and uh, motivations from there. Uh, between the years of 1960 and 1980s, there wasn't really a Silicon Valley, but uh, two companies appear during that era. One is Fairchild uh, Semiconductor, the other one is Intel. Uh, they started uh, producing semiconductor chips uh, for computing that uh, really boosted the computing power uh, provided by, uh, to mankind. However, uh, the solution has a problem. It's very expensive. Normally, people can afford that kind of computer and then uh, it's very hard to use. Nobody knows how to program those devices. So I would say the era between 1960 and 1980 belongs to these silicon companies. And then um, they provided the fundamental layer for human computing. Then the next 20 years, between 1980 and 2000, uh, two great companies appeared, uh, Microsoft and then Apple. What they actually did was to provide a solution on top of this uh, basic computing layer such that now everybody can use a computer. It's very easy for people to use. And because of this uh, easy, easiness of access, then now personal computer can, be, uh, uh, can appear in every single home. And then in fact, one of the mission, uh, the early stage mission of uh, Microsoft is to bring a PC to, very home, uh, to every home, which they have accomplished. Um, so that now we have a layer uh, to provide uh, personal computer to every person in the world. Then next, if we look at the year uh, 2000 to 2010, uh, it's the internet era, which I uh, classify to be the internet era. Uh, the, the key company here is Google. Uh, what they did was, hey, now everybody has a computer. Uh, the next task is to actually connect people to information, such that we have a network infrastructure. Uh, so the Google's main task was to connect uh, people to information. Then on top of this infrastructure in the year 2010 to 2015, we see two great companies uh, uh, coming up. It's uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, they did uh, social network. What they effectively did was to move the human society from offline to online. Uh, currently, all your social activities, mostly uh, you, you can uh, do those online through Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, so now we have a internet-based human society. And then for the next five years, 2015 to 2020, we are seeing the off online, offline business model era, or the O2O era, uh, exemplified by two companies, Uber, uh, Airbnb. What they actually did was to move the human commercial society from offline to online, so that now you can do business online, such that you can order services from Uber. Uh, but then there's still a problem with this, uh, is that each time you order a cab from Uber, it's still a human driver coming to your home to pick you up. And then when you uh, order from Airbnb, it's still uh, a, a human cleaning up your room for you. Um, so that's not efficient enough. That's why I think from 2020, we're entering the AI era, the robotic era. Next time uh, you order something from Uber, it will be an autonomous car picking you up. And then uh, when you order a room from Airbnb, it will be a robot that cleaned that room. So let's begin uh, digging into this AI era. So AI is very broad. Uh, let's focus on robotic technology to start with. Uh, what is uh, robotic technology? Uh, it's not actually one technology. It's a, uh, it consists of many pieces of technology together. Um, here's the way I look at it. There are two parts we, we try to understand um, uh, these robotic technologies. First one is the anatomy of robotic technology. Uh, for something to be called robot, to me, uh, it needs to have 
three fundamental services. The first one is localization. The robot needs to localize itself. Then this kind of technology consists of, uh, say, simultaneous localization and mapping SLAM technology. And then for a robot um, to work, it needs to understand the environment uh, through visual information. So that's what I call the scene understanding technology, uh, exemplified by CNN networks, uh, deep neural networks, etc. Uh, and then the last piece is the interaction part. Uh, for a robot to work, it needs to interact to be able to understand uh, human commands. So that's uh, exemplified by speech recognition and LS LSTM type of technology. And then for each of these uh, parts, you have three steps to make it work. That's the physiology of robotic technology. Uh, we start with sensing. Uh, how do you use senses to understand the world? And then next stage is perception. Uh, now you have all the uh, visual information and audio information and so on. How do you put those pieces together to understand your environment? Then once you understood your environment, how do you make actions to the robot? For example, if you are a car, uh, a vehicle, uh, you detect that there's someone in front of you, you might just uh, hit the brake and that's your action. Autonomous driving is really the capstone of uh, robotic technology today. Um, so that's what we're going to focus on in this series of modules. And then let's go over uh, the, the high-level infrastructure or high-level architecture of autonomous driving. Uh, from this slide, you can see there's the, the pink part, uh, which is the algorithm of autonomous driving, the blue part, which is the client system part of uh, autonomous driving, and then the yellow part is really the cloud computing part of autonomous driving. Let's start with uh, algorithm. Uh, like I said before, uh, if you look at the physiology of a robot, it consists of three parts, uh, sensing uh, to collect information from the environment, perception to understand the environment, and then decision making, how do you uh, make actions. Uh, so for sensing, we have different pieces of sensors, for example, GPS, uh, IMU, which is uh, inertial measurement unit, uh, LIDAR, the laser ranger uh, camera. Uh, we use these sensors to collect information. Then for perception, we provide, say, localization, how do you find out exactly where the car is at any moment. And then object recognition, if there's someone standing in front of the car, how do you recognize that? And then object tracking, if you already detected someone is standing in front of the car, how do you predict his next action, and so on. Uh, and then the decision pipeline, how do you plan the path from uh, part A to part B? For example, if you want to drive from Mountain View to Irvine, how do you plan the path? Uh, and then action prediction, as you uh, are driving the car on the, on the highway, for example, uh, how do you predict uh, the behavior of neighboring cars so that you don't uh, have an accident? Uh, and then at the end, it's obstacle avoidance. If you already detected something in front of you, uh, how do you maneuver your car to uh, go around the obstacle? And then all these are the algorithms, and then these are all the small pieces of technology we need to integrate together on the system. So then in, in the later modules, we also will talk about how do you build a client system to support such a complex uh, autonomous driving uh, uh, software stack. And then on the other hand, uh, you also have a cloud uh, to support autonomous driving. Um, the cloud has some basic functions today. For example, first one is how do you generate a high definition, high definition map uh, for the autonomous vehicle? And then how do you perform model training for the deep learning pipelines on the car? How do you do simulation uh, to test your algorithm before you put those algorithms onto the car? And then how do you store the massive amount of data generated by autonomous vehicles, and so on. So yeah, all the materials we talk about today or, or in, in this series of modules are based on uh, a book called Creating Autonomous Vehicle Systems. Uh, and then we have also put up a blog of the high-level overview of this technology on uh, O'Reilly websites. It's Creating Autonomous Vehicle Systems. You can uh, find these references if you are interested. So that's the end of module one.